Well, hi, boys and girls. How are you today? Thank you for tuning in for another story from Pastor Joe. Hey, uh, I want to tell you a story that has some sad part, but really it's not a sad part at all. So here's how it goes. It's about a woman. I don't know the woman's name. Should we name her? No, we'll just call her a woman who, who had been diagnosed with cancer. You've heard of cancer, maybe? Terrible, terrible disease that they really don't know uh, the cure for. And a lot of people, if they don't catch it soon enough, if they don't figure it out, they call it diagnosing it, if they don't find out that you have the cancer soon enough, well, then you, you die. But if they find it soon enough, they can sometimes treat it and, and, you know, and have a surgery or something like that, and they can and make it go away or they can ju just uh, get rid of it, kind of, and so that you can live the rest of your life uh, uh, you know, in good health. But a lot of people don't figure it out soon enough. The doctors don't notice it soon enough. They are not diagno diagnosed soon enough. And then the do all the doctor can say is, you're going to die and get ready to die. And that's what the story was with this woman. She had been diagnosed with cancer and the doctor told her that the cancer was all over. This disease was all over inside her body. And that's why she had been not feeling well and he said, what's terrible about it is it's so bad right now that you're only going to live for three more months. You only have three months to live. Oh, that was sad news. But uh, her doctor, as he was talking with her and, and trying to explain how this was, the next three months were going to go, he gave her some advice. And he said, I think you should start making preparations to die. In other words, don't don't you know, plan to die, but uh, make preparations with what's going to happen after you die. In other words, you, she had a house. He said, what's going to happen to your house? You need to make preparations for that. You need to figure out what to do with your house. And, and you need to figure that out while you're healthy enough where you can make those decisions, right? Uh, and, uh, and what's going to happen to all the stuff in your house? What's going to happen to whatever money you have left to live on? Who's going to get that? And a lot of decisions had to be made, right? And so she decided that she would contact her pastor to talk about it. And she asked him to come over to her house to discuss all of these certain things about her final wishes, right? What she desired for to happen with this and with that and how she wanted things to go. And as she was talking with him, she, she told him, she, she said, you know what? I would like to have my funeral uh, be conducted a certain way. I would like to decide what songs I want everyone to sing at my funeral. Uh, uh, and, and I would like to, to choose the, the Bible verses that will be read at my funeral, right? Uh, someone needs to get up and read from the Bible, and I would like them to read this verse and that verse and this one and that one, right? And, uh, and then she said, I want... I want to decide what, what I'm going to, to be wearing because she was going to be in a casket. She was going to be buried. Some people are cremated, and we'll, we could talk about that another time, but many people choose to be buried, and they're put in a casket. That's that big box, right? And the lid opens up, and you can see them at the funeral as they're laying there, uh, passed away, but they're in, in, in the uh, casket. And she wanted to decide what kind of a dress that she would wear uh, while she was in her casket. And so she wanted to tell the pastor to see to it that all of these wishes of hers were carried out, okay? So he paid close attention and he listened so that he could do that. And then the woman also told her pastor that she wanted to be buried with her favorite Bible. Oh, she had brought that Bible to church all the time. She had studied it in her morning and evening devotions, and it was a very special Bible to her, and she just enjoyed reading it, and she, she wanted to be buried with, with her Bible. And so when she was laying in her casket, she wanted the Bible to be with, it, with her, sort of like this, you know, as people might be laying in a casket, and then she would have her Bible with her, and that might be nice, right? And so she said, I want that to be buried with me. And, uh, and so the pastor remembered, okay, I need to make sure that that's what happens. And finally, everything was in order, and the pastor was preparing to leave when the woman suddenly remembered something really very important to her. 
And she, she called out, there's one more thing, pastor, she said excitedly. Well, what's that? The, pastor's, uh, re the pastor replied. And this is very important, she said. And so the woman continued. She said, I want to be buried with a fork in my right hand. So maybe we'll have the Bible in my left hand, sort of like this, I don't know, like this, and a fork in my right hand. Well, the pastor stood there looking at the woman, not knowing quite what to say. <laughs> he had never heard this before. And she looked at him and she said, that shocks you, doesn't it? And he, he said, well, to be honest, uh, I'm puzzled by the request said the pastor, and the woman explained why she wanted this. She explained it to the pastor. This is what she said. She said, in all of my years of attending church socials and church functions and potlucks, and any of those activities where food was involved, where food was served, and let's be honest, food's a very important part of, of any church event. <laughs> and uh, and uh, whether it's spiritual, like, uh, you know, when we're having an agape feast or, or something else, potluck or a, or a church social of some sort, food's pretty important. We like to eat together. And every time we ever had something like that, and I attended that, my favorite part was when, when whoever was clearing away the dishes of the, from the table, from the main course, they would lean over and they would say, you can keep your fork. Have you ever heard that said? Yeah, well, she told the pastor, she said, you, I love it when someone would say to me as they were cleaning off our dishes, you can keep your fork. And it was my favorite part of the, of, of the meal because I knew that something better was coming. You know what we call it, right? We call it dessert. <laughs> and she, she said, whenever they said, you can keep your fork, I knew that something better was coming. When they told me that, I knew something great was about to be given to me. It wasn't jello and it wasn't pudding. Oh, it was something like pie, you know, or cake or something really, really, really good. So she said to her pastor, I just want people to see me there in the casket with a fork in my hand, and I want them to wonder, what's with the fork? <laughs> and then she said, Pastor, I want you to tell them, I want you to tell them that something better is coming. So keep your fork too. You get it? You know what I'm talking about? In the Bible, the Apostle Paul said that this life that we live is like the meal, but it's not like dessert. Something much better is waiting for us. That's what the Apostle Paul told us in the New Testament. He said that, you know, we're citizens uh, not of this world, but of the kingdom of God. The, we're citizens of heaven above. And that's going to be much better than what we've just been in, uh, enjoying. This life that we've been enjoying, it might be good, it might be bad. You know, at potluck, sometimes you get food that you think, oh, that was, I didn't choose wisely. I don't like this food at all. But other food you really do like. Well, that's kind of like our life, isn't it? There are things in our life that we really, really enjoy and things that we really didn't enjoy. We don't like very much at all. But in the end, dessert is coming. And that's what the Bible tells us. Something better is coming for those of us who love Jesus. If you love Jesus, Jesus has promised you a better life ahead, regardless of whether you enjoyed this life or not. It's all going to be better coming up. All right. And this is what this woman was looking forward to. She said, I want everyone to know that, yes, death is terrible, but I have something much better to look forward to when Jesus comes. It's like Jesus is trying to, to, to say, he's saying to every one of us, you can keep your fork. I got something really great planned for you. And what that means is we should prepare for heaven. We should always be prepared for Jesus to come. And that affects how we live our life. 
We want to be always thinking about Jesus coming. We want to always be praying to him. We want to, to study, study his word, all the stories in the Bible and everything that he teaches us in, in his word so that we can get to know Jesus better and better and better every day of our life. So then that way, in keeping our fork, you might say, we're prepared when Jesus comes to take us to something a whole lot better, right? All right, so that's God's promise to us. And I really like that little uh, illustration, that little example that this lady came up with, okay? You can keep your fork. Look forward to something better because you love Jesus. All right, thanks for listening. Let's pray together. Lord in heaven, thank you for reminding us that you have something so much better waiting for us. And yes, we'll enjoy this, this life that we have, and there'll be good things, there'll be bad things, just like at a meal at our church sometimes. But we know that something better is always coming. So help us to sort of keep our fork. Help us to be prepared and looking forward to what you have prepared for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.